Today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people don't really understand. They say the Bible is silent on certain things. So that means we can do what we want with other things. It's silent in this so we can have an instrumental music. It's silent to that so we can turn the church into a recreational fun plex where people can eat pizza and party and spend the Lord's money for whatever they want. Let me get into the details of the, this argument. Let me first say there's commands in the Bible, as you know. Some are general, some are specific. And when it comes to general commands, we're shown through necessary inference through the Bible teachings that people did things as aids to meet those general commands. But they did not add to those commands. They did not change those commands. You see what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. Genesis 6, God told Noah to go build an ark, general command. Now. In this regard, he could use a hammer, he could use the tools like saws and, and, and nails and all that stuff to meet that general command. But he also gave Noah a specific command in building the ark. He said, go get gopher wood. Now, if he changed that to get cypress, oak, cedar, that would be an addition. He would be adding to the command of the Lord. He'd be distorting, changing the command of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Uh, he also gave specific commands on how to build the ark, how high, how wide, and all that. If he had changed that, again, that would be adding to the command. Lord's Supper. We're commanded to do that on the first day of the week. Uh, Luke 22 says to do this in remembrance of me. So that's the general command, to remember him. We're commanded to do it on the first day of the week, Acts 20, verse 7, through apostolic example, which it says in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, we're supposed to follow their examples because they're inspired of the Holy Spirit. That talks about that in John chapter 14, verse 23. So we're supposed to follow the examples of the apostles because they're inspired by the Spirit, and they met on the first day of the week. So we got a command to meet and we're shown by apostolic example to meet during that time. Now, in following the specific command, we can have aids. We're not giving any guidelines on the hour of meeting. So that's an aid. We can meet, choose to meet on Sunday at 12 in the afternoon if we want. An aid, we're told to take of the fruit of the vine, Luke 20, was 1 and 18. Now, an aid is having containers so that we can drink the, the grape juice. If we don't have containers, I mean, how are we supposed to drink the grape juice? So the inference is we need something to help us drink the fruit of the vine. Necessary inference, but it's also an aid. Another aid is lights, pews, heat. If, if we don't have a place to meet, we can't do what? We can't partake of the fruit of the vine. We're commanded to have unleavened bread as well. Now, if there's not a container for that, you see what I'm saying? These are aids to help us follow the command, and obviously necessary aids, inferences, is things that we need to meet the commands of the Lord. Aids, the difference between aid and addition. Again, if we're commanded to meet, as shown by apostolic example, to meet on Sunday, and instead we meet to partake of the Lord's Supper on Monday or Thursday, that's an addition. We're changing the command of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? And, um, Instead of taking the fruit of the vine or an, an unleavened bread, instead we have cookies and coke and pizza. That's an addition. We're changing the command of the Lord to take of the fruit of the vine and the unleavened bread to remember Jesus' body and his blood to something else. We're commanding the Bible to be baptized. Matthew 28 says, to be his disciples, we have to be baptized. We're commanded to do this to to be buried with Christ, to rise up and walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6 talks about that. It is necessary to do that, to die to sin, the Bible says. So, this is a command. Now, a tool, an aid, in following the general command to be baptized, we can use a baptistry, a pool, a river, a bathtub, a jacuzzi, to meet that command, to meet that general command we can do what we need to do, tools, aids to follow the command. If we're given a specific command, go and be baptized in the Nile River, that would be a specific command and we would all have to be baptized in the Nile River, but we're given a 
general command, be baptized. And how we're baptized, you know, in the pond, in the lake, in the ocean, is how we want to follow the command is up to us. The difference, though, between aid and addition is this. The Bible calls us, tells us to be baptized. Baptizal means to be immersed. We choose to instead be sprinkled or have water poured on our head. That's an addition. We're changing the command of the Lord. Also, another good example of this, we're commanded in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, to sing and make melody unto the Lord in our hearts. Now, how we can do that? Well, what are aids for singing to the Lord? Songbooks. Let's figure out all memorized. And necessary inference is to have something to help us sing to the Lord, which would be hymnals, songbooks, supplements. Also, if, if you want to be stumbling around trying to sing to the Lord in the dark, the necessary inference is there is lighting. See what I'm saying? These are aids. The difference between aid and an addition. What would be an addition to singing? It commands all the Christians to sing. So instead of singing to the Lord, we change the a cappella command to sing and make melody to the Lord into something else, instrumental music. It's no longer a cappella singing, a congregational singing to the Lord. It's instrumental music that changes a cappella, the vocal utterances to music instrumental. That's an addition. Another good example. The elders are commanded to be over the local church. The local church. And first Peter 5, verse 2 and 3. And in every church to, to have elders is important. Acts 14, 23. Elders are people that look over the church, protect the church from false teachers, nourish the church, feed the church spiritually, take care of the church. Now, an aid for the elders to meet and and share the look out at the church, teach the church, help the church, guide the church, show the church what they need to do. Our local business meetings to tell the church, hey, this is our dreams for the future. This is where we're going. To guide the church, necessary inference and aid would be for the church to meet and hear what the elders have to say. In addition to the elders being over a local church, is building councils, conventions, popes, you know. Uh, art, archbishops, things that uh, are people that govern multiple churches under some other title and position than what the Bible has said, or to change the elder being over a autonomous local church to being sponsoring churches, elders being over multiple churches, uh, governing each other, you know, conventions, councils, they, you know, big old institutional stuff using the Lord's money and elders doing things that the Bible has not specified is an addition the Bible hasn't given them authority to have councils amongst themselves and to govern many bodies with whatever the councils conventions whatever sponsoring churches to do what multiple elders want to do over multiple bodies of Christ then that's an addition that changes the command from something God has given us and adds to it as an addition. And as this Bible says, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, what you do in word and deed, do all in the authority of Jesus Christ. He hasn't given us authority to do something. We should not do it. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11, whoever speaks, let him speak the oracles of God. It, it, otherwise, we're teaching Commands taught by man, and the hearts are far from him. You know, it talks about the Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. They worship me in vain. The hearts are far from me. Teaching the commands taught by men. If, if a bunch of churches are saying, let's do instrumental music. That's a command. That's a creed of men. Or, or let's, let's have multiple churches get together and build an orphan home by the governorship of multiple elders doing church funds that the Bible is silent on. That's an addition. So you see the difference. Now I'm going to have a link that will show uh, this in more detail. I just wanted to tap on this briefly because um, uh, they, this is important stuff. But there's so much more here that will help you understand the difference between the Bible authority aspects we need to follow 
in command that, that meet those commands, that complement those commands, that are aids in following those commands, and things that change the commands. Now, there's a general command, Matthew 28, go into all the world and preach the gospel. General command, we can use a donkey, we can use a horse, apostles, you know, they walked, they went on ships. General command, we can use Facebook, YouTube, airplanes, email, letters. General command, to meet that command, airplane would be an aid, would it not? A car would be an aid to go into the world and preach the gospel, would it not? So that's a general command met with aids. How you change that general command, instead of going into the world and preaching the gospel, you're going into the world using the Lord's funds for things the Bible hasn't given us permission to do, then that's an addition. So, food for thought, this is free and downloadable. Actually, it's a link that you can copy and download. And uh, I don't take credit for this. This is uh, Robert Harkwright. If you want to learn more about his articles and his Bible lessons, great guy. He's a genius in the Bible. He knows this stuff back and forth. Uh, check out his materials. It, he's, he's worth studying. I usually do not use everything I do is I write myself and I do myself. But this is so good that I wanted to use it and share it with you. So I hope you check it out, and I pray that this has helped you, and God blesses your day. Take care, and goodbye.